Hello everybody, Nicholas Snow here, and this is a special edition of the Nicholas Snow Show coming to you on October 10th, 2022, live at 6 p.m. Pacific Time, and we're talking about Indigenous Peoples Day, and my guest is also one of my dearest friends, and I'm going to bust us both by saying one of my oldest friends. We've known each other for over 40 years. I did the math. Now, Patty Talahangva is Hopi. Her tribe's ancestral lands are in what we now know as northern Arizona. Hopi has the oldest continuous inhabited villages in the United States, and Talahangva, or Patty as I call her, <laughs> is a journalist and has worked in all media platforms and today serves as a senior correspondent with ICT News. ICT stands for Indian Country Today in terms of that network's origins, and Patty, I didn't know this. She's listening backstage. She has her own Wikipedia page. I don't have a Wikipedia page. That's fine. That's just fine. So, Talahangva's career as a journalist started when she attended the Phoenix Indian School in Phoenix, Arizona. This was one of several schools operated by the federal government with the intention of assimilating Native American children into white society. While the schools evolved, there was always an element of the strict military rules that governed the first years of the boarding school policy. Patty was born in Denver, Colorado, because her family went on the relocation program, in quotes, and moved from the Hopi Reservation. This was yet another federal government uh, move meant to assimilate American Indians. So uh, that's a little bit of Patty's background, and she posted on her social media that this episode was basically Indian 101, and I think we can all be used to uh, be enlightened about the importance of Indigenous Peoples Day, which many people are calling Columbus Day, which really becomes horrifying when you realize that we're basically, in celebrating Columbus, we're celebrating the colonialism of America, I can't quite wrap my head around that with uh, the knowledge I have today. So uh, President Joseph Biden, uh, in a 22, 2022 proclamation this week, states, On Indigenous Peoples Day, we honor the sovereignty, resilience, and immense contributions that Native Americans have made to the world, and we recommit to upholding our solemn trust and treaty responsibilities to tribal nations, strengthen, strengthening our nation-to-nation -nation ties. Is the United States upholding its treaties? I'm not so sure about that. Uh, the proclamation goes on to say, For centuries, indigenous peoples were forcibly removed from ancestral lands, displaced, assimilated, and banned from worshipping or performing many sacred ceremonies. Yet today they remain some of our greatest environmental stewards. They maintain strong religious beliefs that still feed the soul of our nation, and they have chosen to serve in the United States Armed Forces at a higher rate than any other group. Native peoples challenge us to confront our past and do better, and their contributions to scholarship, law, the arts, public service, and more continue to guide us forward. And the proclamation from the White House concludes, On Indigenous Peoples Day, we celebrate Indigenous history and our new beginning together, honoring Native Americans for shaping the contours of this country since time immemorial. So uh, that's kind of the White House's take. We'll see what Patty thinks of that and more as the show continues after this.
And if you're watching this show live, I can curate your social media comments right onto the screen. Christian Ortega says, Hola, muchas gracias, amigo. Christian watches every one of my shows. Thank you, Christian. And my good friend, Paul Jasek, is watching. Hey, Paul. Astrologer to the stars. Astrologer to the star. That's kind of almost redundant, but anyway, hi, Paul. So without further delay, let me welcome to the show my very good friend, Patty Talahangva. Hi, Patty. Hi, Nick. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? Very, very good. Eskwili umangkakya no kutsako king mana yan hopi matsiwa. No, Patty Talahangva yan pahan matsiwa. No, tsitsomo with uncle. I want to uh, thank your viewers for joining us and let them know that my Hopi name is White Spider, which is also my Twitter handle, which is at the bottom of the screen there. And I'm on Instagram as just Patty Thalohunba. I'm from the village of Walpi, and uh, my, I come from the Corn and Water Clans. Okay. Do you know I've known you for over 40 years, and I think that's the longest I've heard you speak in your native language in one oh. sentence <laughs> I clearly I, I, cur I, I clearly speak. wasn't interested enough I, I would speak more but then you wouldn't know what I'm saying so well that's okay then you can talk about me uh, in front of my <laughs> back um, and th and by the way the fact that you call me Nick demonstrates you've known me for over 40 years because from college on I always introduced myself as Nicholas but you have rights uh, you have rights as my friend. Unfortunately, you don't have the rights that you should have as, an, as a, an indigenous person in our country. So I led the show by talking about, you know, the the beautiful lofty proclamation from the White House. And, you know, I I believe that they believe what they're saying. But um, I, I would love for you just to talk about um, the point that I made that Columbus Day, isn't it Columbus Day, in fact, celebrating colonialism? And how do you feel about the existence of an Indigenous People Day, as if every day shouldn't be Indigenous People's Day? Well, I, I would um, first thank you so much for in, inviting me to be on your show. And, and yes, you know, we've been friends since high school and um, uh, have had a lot of discussions through the years. Um, you know, in this day and age, we know what Columbus did. We know what he didn't do and we know the atrocities he committed. And to continue to have a holiday in his honor is baffling. And so many native organizations, as we've reported on, have questioned that and have questioned um, all of the uh, uh, backlash they get when they're saying, you know, we really need to look at Indigenous Peoples Day. So I'll just leave that there. You know, there's, there's a lot of uh, information you can look up if you don't know the history behind Christopher Columbus. And, um, and I would kind of like to leave them in the past because I'm here to talk about Indigenous Peoples Day and who we are as, as uh, Hopi people and as uh, Lakota people, uh, Zuni people, Arapaho people, because there are more than 500 federally recognized tribes in the country. And so often people just lump us into Native American or American Indian or Indigenous. But you know, I encourage everyone to really learn the different tribes, because each tribe has its own language, religion, cultures, you know, it's just beautiful. So we have such vibrant uh, cultures and, um, and you should learn them and understand. In Arizona alone, which is where I live, is um, home to 22 tribal nations. And yet I would, I, I, I would guess that you could walk down you know, Phoenix, Arizona, Central Avenue, and ask people to name even five of the tribes, or even ask them how many tribes are now in what is called the state of Arizona. People just don't know. So that's real simple to just at least start learning the different tribes. People aren't taught that. I, I, you know, you say start learning, but then the first thing I, other than self-study, uh, uh, where does one learn that? Uh, um, the, now, in the what is now known as Palm Springs, uh, this area of California is known to m many different tribes, and the Awa Kawia Band of uh, the Awa Caliente Band of Kawia Indians um, 
is well funded because they're a casino tribe and they're building an amazing museum right in the middle of downtown uh, to tell their own stories. But most tribes are not in the position to really preserve and promote and uh, the and foster the education about their cultures. The state of California, we reported, just is is launching a whole uh, tourism uh, program to educate visitors to California about all of the tribes in California. And I believe you have more than a hundred tribes all up and down, you know, uh, throughout California. And um, and yes, you know, some tribes are very fortunate to have the uh, means to create some kind of museum or gallery or some kind of visitor center where you can learn. Uh, we're also very blessed to have some good partnerships with various museums. The Herd Museum in Phoenix, Arizona is wonderful to visit. It also has some of its ex uh, exhibits online, so you can go there. And um, yeah, I have worked in the past with the Arizona Department of Education to help increase their curriculum and social studies to include information about tribal uh, people in Arizona. So there are ways, and yes, we don't teach this history in our schools, and there's a big void of, of knowledge. And, um, and when you get to college, you really have to seek out these courses because they are there, but you really have to dig and look around and, and see what you can uh, take to beef up your knowledge about um, Hopi people. Well, thank you for that. And of course, you work for a network. Uh, um, now, you're here representing yourself. You're not here representing Indian Country Today, ICT News. But I want people to know about uh, the website, IndianCountryToday.com, because it's a daily newscast and also a wonderful way for people to learn. It's available online, but it's also available uh, on uh, on PBS. Right. So we um, our digital side is wonderful, all kinds of stories that we have. And um, a, a lot of other news organizations are citing the reporting that we're doing uh, on various um, uh, stories. And so, yes, you can go there. There is a newsletter you can subscribe to. We're coming out with a couple of others. And then we do have a broadcast. And so if you go to the website, there is a, a link if you, if you those three little lines there, click on that. And um, there's the second one that says newscasts. You can click on that link and you can see every single newscast that we have produced. And we started on April 6, 2020, as the pandemic was really starting to take off. And we looked at how this pandemic was impacting Indian country. What were tribes doing when um, the pandemic hit? Were they prepared? How were they taking care of their elders? And, um, and then when the vaccine became available, the CDC had guidelines. And what I thought was really wonderful for tribes, they practiced their sovereignty. And so they said, okay, CDC has guidelines, but we're going to create our own guidelines. And some tribes, they vaccinated uh, people, the first people to be vaccinated were people who could speak their language and who were cultural bears. And so they really wanted to protect that knowledge and uh, make sure those people were, 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 um, uh, uh, wouldn't succumb to the coronavirus. And um, that, you know, that's, that's, a, that's an example of sovereignty. And I thought that was really, really great. So, and in some cases, the tribes had uh, an abundance of, of the vaccine. And so they opened it up to their local communities and um, you didn't have to be uh, from that tribe in order to get vaccinated. So there were some really great examples of sovereignty being practiced during and, and continues to be practiced um, because, you know, we're not out of the pandemic yet. We think we are, but. I know people are acting as if it doesn't exist. So I get you for another 15 minutes, uh, but I'm going to take a break because I want all of the Promo Homo TV viewers to know how to watch our official broadcast of the Palm Springs Pride Parade. And then after that, more with Patty Talahangva. And we're going to get into the Indian 101 section of the show after this. I have found a
Have you ever been to uh, a Pride Parade, Patty? Yes, I ran in the half marathon for the Phoenix Pride. Uh, uh, and that, the, the half marathon was a part of uh, Pride Day here in Phoenix a couple of years ago. I, ha I have a wonderful medal, so absolutely. And the Pride Festival has been held at Steel Indian School Park. So you Fantastic. Got and you're, no, you're one of the very first people I came out to. Uh, yes. And I thought you were going to tell me you had some terminal disease or like, you know, AIDS was starting to really take off at that point. I remember that night so specifically because I was terrified. And then when you said I'm gay, I'm like, oh, my God, is that all I want? To <laughs> I thought I was going to lose you to cancer or something. And but I, I do remember that, Nick. And I remember asking you, have you have you been tested? And you said yes. And I said, stay safe. So, gosh, well, that's that. I mean, I, it just seems like yesterday. Well, and I managed to stay safe until August of 2007 when I became yeah. HIV positive. Um, that is a whole story in and of itself. It was a human experience. But anyway, we have a lot of history together. Earlier, we were talking about Indian Country Today. I just want people to see that website. It's really it is an important source of learning and uh, love to put it out there. So, um all right, you're reaching a broad audience. There might be some people that have tuned in specifically because of the of the branding of indigenous content, but a lot of the people watching, they do need some Indian 101. So let's have some Indian 101 from Patty Talahongva. <laughs> well, so Indian 101, I joke about that because people, you know, I don't mind a a answering questions. Uh, you know, it's part of the effort is to educate and to... Uh, to build allies, you know, what's what's happening with our community. And, you know, we talk a lot about this historical trauma that we're living with today. Well, where did that come from? Well, you know, from the beginning of, of this country, uh, people like to think, oh, we're founded on greatness. We weren't. We were founded on, on atrocious behavior, you know, by our U.S. government and, um, and the col colonies, you know, before that. Um, where we were enslaved, uh, we were uh, rounded up, we were, you know, the government literally tried to kill us all off. And when they couldn't, um, then they started passing policies that completely affected us, you know, to this day. And, um, and yet the government also used the treaties that tribes had signed between the uh, French and the uh, English governments when they started creating the U.S. government and you know who signs treaties but sovereign nations and so on one hand uh, you know the europeans who came here were trying to kill us off on the other hand they were using our treaties with these other governments to say you know we're going to try we're going to create the united states uh, sovereign nation and we're going to sign treaties too with you know the different european countries and with tribes so it's this really convoluted history but even though we signed treaty, you know, the, the government established treaties with some tribes and um, they continued to pass policies that um, that at every turn was meant to assimilate us uh, since they couldn't kill us all off and to uh, Christianize us and basically uh, turn us into you know, white people because they, every policy was designed to get rid of our cultures our languages, our um, uh, land base. I mean, it, it, taking away of our of our uh, minerals, of our whether 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 it was uh, timber, whether it was oil, whether it was you know even natural gas, gold, whatever, anything. You know, they, it just is this crazy history of what we went through. Um, a couple of things, you know, when it comes to language, the boarding school policy that the government had. They literally took the children. They, they forcibly removed these kids in, eight, in the late 1800s and put them in boarding schools and then made the kids uh, wear uniforms and they marched everywhere. So it was these schools were run like a military base because they were set up by a military man, Henry Pratt. And he's famous for saying, kill the Indian, save the man. So, I mean, that's what we were under. And... Um, and yet uh, in World War I, when war broke out, 
so many of the boys from the boarding schools ended up enlisting in, in the military and going off to serve in World War I. And they did that because they felt like they were there to protect their homeland. Not so much a government or a flag or whatever, but their homeland. And um, because, and we weren't U.S. citizens at that time, after that, in 1924, Congress passed the Indian Citizenship Act, which granted citizenship to all tribes uh, at that federal level. And um, now back up a little bit again and remember that these kids were in boarding schools and they weren't allowed to speak their languages. So they were forced to learn English. But it shows that these kids were resilient, they were resourceful, and they continue to speak their language. So then in World War II, the government turned to the Indians and they said, can you create a code in your language? and um, pass military uh, instructions across the battlefields. And those kids, even though they had been punished for speaking their languages, been told not to speak their languages, could still speak their languages. And so we had a number of tribes, like more than 20 tribes who had code talkers in World War I. The Choctaws actually had code talkers in World, or excuse me, we had more than 20 tribes who had, who had code talkers in World War II and in World War I. Choctaws served as code talkers. So you have, again, this confusion with the government, you know, don't speak your language. Hey, can you save our butts, you know, by creating codes in your languages? Um, that's one example. Another example is food, basic food. You know, I'm sitting here eating my Hopi food. This is piki made out of blue cornmeal. And um, this is our, what kind of the kind of food that my people have been eating since time began. And yet when, when the government came in and they started moving us off reservation or off our lands and putting us onto reservations or restricting our way of life, hoping we're still on our, on our traditional homelands for the most part. But um, they took our traditional foods away and, and gave us government commodity foods, which are high in fat and salt. And, um, and in many cases, some of that meat in the early years was, was um, uh, bad. And um, so our food sources were taken away. And, and then it was replaced with red meat. And remember, there were no cows in the Americas. That, the cows came from Spain. So we didn't have red meat and we didn't have dairy. Most of us are lactose intolerant. But the change in our diet was so dramatic. Wheat was introduced. And this, this is what Hopis eat as bread, okay? Which this is, is corn. cornmeal. And, and then we had to eat wheat. Well, look at our health today. We have high rates of diabetes. We have uh, heart issues. We've got um, obesity, you know, and then look at our issues with alcohol. We don't have, I will say this, happy hour is not a part of any Native American culture. And yet, white America, that is the culture. We go to happy hour. We don't have that. So we have issues with our food. We have issues with, you know, our languages. We have issues with our religion. America says, hey, we're the land of freedom of religion. No, we're not. Ask a native. Um, so, you know, we're looking at our visibility. Where do you see Native Americans in mainstream uh, media? Uh, there are no Native Americans uh, uh, on any uh, mainstream network news. Uh, we're finally starting to see them on programs, but uh, you know, you've got to go to some of the streaming services. So for example, we have uh, in the second is the second season of Reservation Dogs, huge success, really great writing, you know, on all indigenous uh, cast, which includes, you know, writers and such uh, wonderful visibility. Rutherford Falls, which was canceled, but that was a great program too. Hopefully they find a new home. Um, and then the movie Prey that came out recently, both in English and then they had another version that was uh, uh, spoken all in the Comanche language. And um, uh, today on Indigenous Peoples Day, Spirit Rangers is premiering. So it's on Netflix. And so people can watch Spirit Rangers tonight. Is that and, a series um, or a movie? I think it's just, it's, it's, well, I'm not sure. I should have checked. Okay. If, but you can, check, you can look that up. And then next year, there's going to be a movie out um, called Killers of the Flower Moon. And that's about, in the 1920s, uh, it, talks, it shows how the Osage people 
were targeted. And the women were targeted by white men because they had what were called head rights to their land and to the minerals. So um, literally white men were marrying Osage women and maybe have a couple of kids with them, but then they would kill them and they would take their property and they flourished. There are podcasts about this. There have been several books written about this. And now there's a movie that's going to be made. And uh, well, it's in, it's, it will be released next year. I think, I'm not sure what, when, but somewhere, sometime in 2023. So you're seeing these um, uh, portrayals in the media. So I think people are starting to um, have a little more access. We've had some in the past, not enough. Even all the shows that I named are not enough. And because um, I turn on the TV every day and I'm like, I don't see indigenous people. I don't see Hopis. I don't see uh, Utes and I don't see um, Grovants, you know, so or Chickasaws, you know. So I look around and say, oh, where can we see uh, Native people? Um, we just celebrated the first uh, Native American astronaut, a female astronaut. John Harrington is Chickasaw and he, he went up in a. Uh, uh, a space shuttle back in 2006, I think, somewhere around that time frame. And, uh, but now the first native woman, uh, female astronaut, and she's the commander of the, the shuttle that just went up. Um, our new U.S. Secretary Treasurer is a Native American woman. So we're seeing some firsts at a high level. Uh, Deb Holland, of course, is uh, the Interior Secretary. She is a, a Pueblo woman from New Mexico. And um, never before in the history of the Interior Department has that position been filled by an actual Native person. And, and yet they oversee the Bureau of Indian Affairs. We're a highly regulated people, Nick. You know, we have, we're, first of all, the federal government put us under the War Department. That's, I mean, that should say everything in one, <laughs> one sentence, right? Uh, Native American Affairs under the War Department. And then that changed over time and it became the Interior Department. And Interior oversees all of our national treasures, right? National forests and whatnot. So we're under that. So I say we're national treasures. And, and in that department is the Bureau of Indian Affairs and the Bureau of Indian Education. So, you know, we're regulated through that. Our health care, which uh, was promised um, through treaties, is under Health and Human Services. And so we have the uh, uh, Indian Health Services that um, takes is supposed to take care of our health, uh, our health care, uh, but that's very limited. And the only people who have actual full coverage are people who live on the reservations. So being living in an urban city, we're basically penalized because we don't have the full services that our counterparts on the reservations have, and yet try to live on the reservation in many cases there's not a lot of uh, jobs. And so, you know, you have that issue, you know, you want to be home, you want to, you know, be around your people, uh, but how do you make a living out there? So we've got a lot of issues, but uh, we talk again about that resiliency because despite everything, you know, we're still here, we're still speaking our languages. I think there's a big uh, uh, resurgence in that too with the younger generation saying, you know, they, they want to learn, they want to continue on with, whether it's dancing traditions, uh, the religious aspect, um, whatever it is, and they're, they're fighting for that. And today, tonight in Phoenix, in fact, Phoenix, I would say this, Phoenix has the most vibrant urban Indian community in all of the country. We have, we started out about 30 years ago or so, and um, we had Native American Recognition Days. And it was a few days of events. And then people started tacking on more events and more events. And now, and of course, the last two years, because of the pandemic, we haven't had any, any events. But this year, we finally came back into in-person events. And um, we have a little more than 40 events. And we started on October 1st, and we're going all the way through uh, the end of December. And so today, there's 40 downtown, events between October 1st and yes. the end of December, all kinds, pageants, powwows, awards, dinners, the parade, you know, I mean, you name it. And tonight there's a fashion show, there's music, there's traditional foods. 
I mean, there's so much going on in Phoenix right now. And it's just con- going to continue because, you know, you know, tomorrow is going to be Indigenous Peoples Day. And the next day, you know, I see a lot of friends posting, woke up Indigenous again. <laughs> <Still hoping. laughs> it's, you know, it's like, we don't care about just one day. We celebrate all the time. <laughs> Well, the same with the the LGBTQ community. It's like, right? especially in Palm Springs. Yeah. yeah, you woke up and you're still gay, right? Yep, still gay, still gay. <laughs> By the way, Paul, who's watching, he says wonderful show. So oh, thank good. you, Paul. Cheers now, to you, Paul. Now, oh my goodness, you're drinking out of your promo homo mug. <laughs> <laughs> You know, only six of those in the world exist because Ooh. I ordered them as a prototype and I just don't have a way to to make them available. But yeah, but that's a you. that's a great opportunity for me to throw this up. Uh, I would have forgotten to. So if you're having Merch Envy, you can go to promohomo.tv and click on the Merch link uh, for um, all kinds of different available t-shirts. So... Patty, I know you have a dinner date tonight with your son and his girlfriend. Um, what's your son's first name? Nicholas. And how did that happen? <laughs> I have a very good friend. <laughs> my son, Nick. Uh, well, uh, give him my love and tell him we gave him a shout out tonight. So I know you have to go soon, but we've talked a lot about... Um, well, before the, we go, the, the, I, I just want to encourage, if anyone has a question, I'm happy to answer, you know, so if there's somebody on social media who has a burning question they want to ask me, um, I can't guarantee I'll have an answer, but I'll try. So I'll do it. Okay. Of- and, and that includes comments on this broadcast afterwards. Uh, but I wasn't just going to drop drop the show. I want, uh, We've talked a lot about um, problems and challenges and uh, the way that Native peoples have been uh, victimized and abused, and it's still going on in many ways. We've talked about education as one of the solutions, but give us a broader answer about what are the solutions. Well, you know, I think being being a it's it's nice to be curious today, but continue that curiosity, you know, and and go visit. Um, um, a museum like the National Museum of the American Indian in Washington, D.C. It's wonderful. And they have all kinds of resources online. And it's part of the Smithsonian family. So it's nmai.org. And um, you can learn there. I was in Oklahoma City recently, and I went to the First Americans Museum. Fabulous museum. And their ground floor has displays, again, of all the different tribes that are in Oklahoma. And I think it's real important to look at that preposition. We're not from or of, we are in what is now Arizona or what is now Oklahoma. And, um, uh, and you know, land acknowledgements are okay, uh, but honestly, uh, look up a nonprofit that can really use your help. Hopi, we have like 30 nonprofits at Hopi. The Hopi Education Endowment Fund is, is one that I, I, I um, uh, support. The Hopi Foundation is another one. And um, there are several uh, uh, programs out there. And um, in other tribes, you know, they have programs. And, uh, and don't be afraid to go out to, you know, what it, look up the tribes in your area and see what's going on. Because I guarantee you they're doing something that the public is invited to. So, you know, get out there and get to know your, your Native community. And, um, and don't be a stranger. Well, and you don't be a stranger. Um, so, uh, and, uh, you've, you've eaten your, uh, Hopi food now and you're off to have Mexican food later. I'm jealous of both. Uh, <laughs> did I tell you Mexican? Well, I, I, we did talk, didn't we? Yes. But in the pre-show in the green room. Oh, that's right. Well, yes. Look, this, this is what we call bread. Okay. You see that? Uh-huh. Look how thin that is. I've had that. Yeah, I have had that. Mm-hmm. Our bread. Yeah. You know, you, you talked about, um, the Hopi lands are uh, what was now known as Northern Arizona, and that's where you and I met. And uh, I lived in a, I lived with my mom and my two brothers right next to where they would have the the powwow in Flagstaff every summer. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, 
I, I won't say I had the best education around Native issues, but I grew up with a, lots of Navajo and Hopi, and I, I did learn reverence. Uh, I do know that the message from my mom was reverence. Um, so I'm, I'm grateful for that. But there's always more, and I'm grateful for you. And uh, our adventure continues. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's, a, there's no end to that and, and to the learning. And, you know, uh, I appreciate people who take the time and ask questions, and, and they want to learn. So, yeah. All right, I won't keep you any longer, Patty. And uh, I'm going to say goodbye with you to my audience. And if you want to stay there for one minute, we can say goodnight, Patty. But you can, if you have to run out the door, no issues. And until next time, with Patty Talahangva on Indigenous, Indigenous Peoples Day 2022. But she'll wake up tomorrow. She'll still be Hopi. And I'll <laughs> wake up tomorrow and I'll still be gay. So, And you'll wake you know up what tomorrow. We say, right? You know what we say, right? What? Don't worry, be hopey. Oh, don't worry. Do, 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 do,